New research is showing us that a simple vitamin could hold the key to protecting millions of people from the irreversible blindness caused by glaucoma. In this video, we're diving deep into groundbreaking research that explores the remarkable potential of vitamin B3 or niacin in revolutionizing glaucoma treatment. But first, let's set the stage. Glaucoma is an optic nerve disorder that can rob us of our sight. It's most commonly associated with increased intraocular pressure. As pressure within the eye increases, damage occurs to specific cells in our optic nerves called retinal ganglion cells. Injury to these retinal ganglion cells can lead to cell death, and as these optic nerve cells die, we can begin to lose our peripheral vision. As glaucoma progresses, our visual field continues to shrink and can ultimately lead to blindness. Unfortunately, these optic nerve cells, they don't regenerate. So when vision damage is done from glaucoma, it's permanent. While intraocular pressure takes center stage as a modifiable risk factor, we eye doctors often see relentless loss of retinal ganglion cells despite adequate eye pressure reduction, suggesting that there may be more factors at play in this disease. So glaucoma's pathophysiology remains a puzzle with missing pieces. Enter neuroprotection. Neuroprotection in glaucoma aims to intervene at the molecular level, enhancing retinal ganglion cell survival independently of eye pressure control. The quest to unlock this potential has sparked intense interest and research over the last several decades. However, history has shown us that the journey has been challenging, with numerous molecules showing promise in preclinical studies but failing to translate into clinical success. Let's take a closer look. Mimantine, for example, is an N-methyl D-aspartate receptor antagonist that has been used to treat Alzheimer's disease. Early studies kindled hope by demonstrating its potential to protect retinal ganglion cells in both mice and monkey studies, but subsequent randomized double-mass phase 3 clinical trials in humans dashed these hopes, revealing no significant impact on glaucoma progression. The road to clinical translation isn't always smooth. So what gives? Why is it that these molecules look so promising in preclinical animal studies then fail spectacularly in human clinical trials? Well, there's several reasons. Obviously, a mouse is different from a monkey, which is different from a human. But also, the disease process in glaucoma is different in each of these species. Researchers try to mimic glaucoma, either by genetically altering mice, or they can induce high eye pressures in animals by using special experimental methods, such as injecting beads into their eyes. But this is different than the glaucoma we see in humans. Another key difference is intervention timing. In experimental animal studies, the intervention is usually given right before or at the same time as the injury or disease is induced. Whereas in human trials, patients have already been diagnosed with the disease and it likely has already been lingering a while before receiving the medication. Lastly is how the results are measured. In animal studies, often the animals are sacrificed and then their tissue, in this case their optic nerves and retinal ganglion cells, can be prepared to be examined and studied under a microscope. Obviously, in human studies, we're not going to sacrifice research subjects after they take their new medication so we can slice them up and look at them under a microscope. So we use different functional measurements, such as visual field testing, to determine if there is an effect. And sometimes it can take months or years to show significant changes in visual field testing. Okay, so now we understand that transitioning from research on a bench and in an animal and translating it to the real world is a very difficult process. The pursuit of neuroprotection for glaucoma has pushed researchers to explore different molecules. Brain-derived neurotrophic factor, ciliary neurotrophic factor, antioxidants, and even ginkgo biloba extract have all been studied. But the journey from the laboratory to clinical reality for these molecules and medications has been fraught with challenges without much success in human clinical settings. That is, until now. Vitamin B3, also known as niacin, is a family of vitamins which include niacin, nicotinamide, and nicotinamide riboside. Vitamin B3 has shown remarkable promise in multiple studies as an effective treatment to prevent glaucomatous damage. Let's take a second to understand why vitamin B3 makes biological sense as a way to help prevent glaucoma. The cell bodies of retinal ganglion cells are located in our retina, and they have projections from the retina through the optic nerve all the way to a structure called the lateral geniculate nucleus in the brain. And these retinal ganglion cells serve an extremely important function. When we look around, light from our surroundings enters our eyes and lands on our retina. The photoreceptors in our retina take these light signals and converts them into electrical signals. The retinal ganglion cells take this electrical visual information and then deliver it to our brain, allowing us to see. These retinal ganglion cells are the literal bridge between our eyes and our brain. And this task of converting light into electricity and sending it to our brain requires a lot of energy. 
In fact, the retina is one of the most metabolically active and energy demanding tissue in the entire body. So when there's disruptions in our cellular energy supplies, retinal ganglion cells are extremely vulnerable to these changes. So how do our cells produce energy? The answer is through our mitochondria. You can think of mitochondria as the little engines in each of our cells. We feed our cells glucose and fat, and our mitochondria converts these nutrients into usable energy in the form of ATP. You can think of ATP as the energy currency of our cells. It powers many of the critical cellular processes that cells need to survive and function. In order for our mitochondria to produce energy properly, it requires a molecule called nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, or NAD+. NAD plus plays a pivotal role in our energy metabolism pathways. And so if our bodies and our eyes are lacking sufficient levels of NAD plus, then our mitochondria won't be able to produce adequate amounts of ATP energy, which can cause damage to our cells. In addition, NAD plus has also been shown to be critical for DNA repair, gene expression, and production of proteins that our cells need to function. So NAD plus is important not only for our mitochondria, but also for many functions throughout our cells. In fact, Beyond glaucoma, studies have shown that NAD plus levels decrease as we age, and declining NAD plus is causally linked to several aging-related diseases, such as cognitive decline and Alzheimer's dementia, cancer, metabolic disease, and diabetes, as well as frailty and muscle weakness. Even further, many studies have shown that the progression of these age-related diseases can be slowed or they can even be reversed by restoring NAD plus levels in cells. And so there is a lot of effort, time, and money being poured into NAD plus metabolism research by universities and pharmaceutical companies throughout the world to figure out how we can use this knowledge about NAD plus to help treat age-related disease. Now, going back to glaucoma, several studies have shown that in patients with glaucoma, their retinal ganglion cells were found to have dysfunctional and damaged mitochondria. In this study, for example, researchers investigated retinal samples from human eye donors. They looked at eye samples in patients who had glaucoma and at eye samples in patients who didn't have glaucoma. Then they compared the samples to see what differences they could find. In these images, mitochondria is depicted as the purple structures within the retinal ganglion cells. You can see that in a control cell from a patient who doesn't have glaucoma, you have several mitochondria throughout the cell. In a patient with glaucoma, on the other hand, you see significantly less numbers of mitochondria, which led the researchers to believe that deficient mitochondria may play a role in glaucoma. And since NAD is such a critical compound to the proper functioning of mitochondria, scientists then began to wonder whether there was any correlation between levels of NAD and glaucoma. This is where vitamin B3 comes into play. The different forms of vitamin B3 in our bodies can all get converted into NAD to be used by our mitochondria. With this knowledge, researchers began to theorize that perhaps the levels of vitamin B3 in our body may affect the NAD available to mitochondria and in turn affect the patient's risk of developing glaucoma. And more and more research is beginning to show that vitamin B3 plays an important role in the development of glaucoma. In this 2019 study from France, researchers took blood samples from 34 patients with glaucoma and compared them with the blood samples of 30 age and sex matched control patients who didn't have glaucoma. They found that patients with glaucoma had significantly lower levels of nicotinamide, also known as vitamin B3, compared to control subjects. They saw that the median concentration of nicotinamide from the blood sample was 0.14 micromolar in the glaucoma group and 0.19 micromolar in the control group. Okay, so we're starting to build the case that there may be a relationship between vitamin B3 levels and glaucoma. This study from 2021 from a team at Columbia University showed that giving patients with moderate glaucoma a vitamin B3 and pyruvate supplement actually improved visual field results in patients. To me, this is a really interesting finding. Because when I treat glaucoma patients every day, my realistic expectation is that we're not trying to improve vision or reverse damage. We're just trying our best to try to prevent further glaucomatous damage from occurring. Yes, we have many medications, lasers, and surgeries, and we consider these interventions successful if the visual fields stay the same over time. But in the vitamin B3 study, we're seeing an improvement in patient visual field results. There are rare cases, for example, if patients with glaucoma have super high eye pressures, then we significantly lower the eye pressure with a glaucoma surgery, then we can see some improvement in patient's vision. But generally, for patients with glaucoma, we don't expect to see significant improvement in patient visual fields over time. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that all the damage from glaucoma was miraculously cured by the vitamin B3 supplement and that patients totally regained their vision. Let me explain that a little bit more clearly with an example. This is a series of visual field tests of a patient with glaucoma as they slowly lost their vision over five years. 
These visual field results are of the patient's right eye, and areas of black are areas where the patient has lost significant vision. Areas of gray are where the patient has lost mild to moderate vision, and areas of white are areas where they still have good vision. And the pattern you'll notice, and this is usually what we see in glaucoma, is that the visual field defects start on the nasal side and progresses until they're left with tunnel vision. And unfortunately for some, even the remaining tunnel vision can eventually become extinguished, leaving the patient totally blind. And the general thought is the retinal ganglion cells responsible for, say, this area of vision, where there's already severe vision loss indicated by the dark black shading, those cells, they're dead, they're gone, they're not coming back. But it's these cells responsible for this area here, the gray portion, where there's mild to moderate damage done. These cells are very critical because they are injured from the glaucoma. They're hanging precariously off of a cliff and at risk of dying. And unfortunately, if the glaucomatous damage continues, then these cells, they're gonna die too. And that's how we see the spread of visual field loss in glaucoma. So going back to our study, what the researchers observed was visual improvement at the edge of the visual field defects at the areas where we have injured cells, but not totally dead cells. And so what they write in the paper is that nicotinamide supplementation boosts cell mitochondria of these optic nerve cells and may rescue the injured or impaired retinal ganglion cells, the ones that are still hanging off of the clip. The dead cells, they wrote, are less likely to respond to supplementation. And that's the expectation that patients should have with vitamin B3 supplementation. We're not expecting all of the vision to come back, but there can be some improvement at the edge of the visual field cut. And hopefully, the nicotinamide will also help to prevent further development of vision loss down the road. But we don't have long-term data or long-term clinical trials quite yet on nicotinamide to know whether it will prevent progression of glaucoma in real-world settings. Although, there are several studies going on throughout the world, and we will hopefully have that answer in the next few years. So, how are these researchers able to show that vitamin B3 improved the visual field function in glaucoma patients? Well, they took 42 patients with open-angle glaucoma and randomized them to either a treatment group and a control group. The treatment group received daily supplementation of vitamin B3 or nicotinamide and pyruvate, which is another important compound for mitochondrial function. The placebo group received placebo pills without any active ingredients. All the patients received baseline visual testing. Then, the treatment group received 1,000 mg of nicotinamide and 1,500 mg of pyruvate for one week, then 2,000 mg of nicotinamide and 3,000 mg of pyruvate for one week, then finally 3,000 mg of nicotinamide and 3,000 mg of pyruvate daily for one week. The visual field tests were then repeated after the three-week course of supplementation. At the end of the study, the researchers found that the patients who took the nicotinamide and pyruvate supplementation had significantly improved visual field test results compared to the control group. So this study is reporting very encouraging results for vitamin B3 and pyruvate supplements as an adjunctive treatment option for patients with glaucoma to help them protect their retinal ganglion cells. We do have to keep in mind that this study has several limitations. First, it's a small sample size. They only studied 29 patients, and these patients all had moderate glaucoma. It's unclear whether this reported benefit would be more generalizable to larger populations with varying severities of glaucoma. Another drawback was its short follow-up length. The patients only received supplementation for three weeks, so it's unclear if these effects would be sustained long-term. One encouraging point though, is that these results were supported by a different study out of Australia. In this study, glaucoma patients who received supplements of nicotinamide or vitamin B3 at a dose of 1500 milligrams daily for six weeks, then 3000 milligrams daily for six weeks, showed significantly improved visual field results compared to patients who received placebo. Glaucoma specialists and researchers around the world have definitely taken notice of these incredible results. And now there are several long-term large randomized control trials currently ongoing to further investigate the possible benefits of vitamin B3. There's the glaucoma nicotinamide trial led by a research team out of Sweden with a projected end date of December, 2026. There's the nicotinamide riboside as a neuroprotective therapy trial currently underway in Hong Kong. And finally, there's the nicotinamide and glaucoma trial led by researchers in London with a projected end date of November, 2026. So in the next few years, we will see more and more data come out to shed light on vitamin B3 and its potential protective effects on glaucoma. For most of these trials, patients are started on a lower dose, about 1000 milligrams or 1500 milligrams and gradually titrated up to a dose of 3000 milligrams per day. And if the results continue to show positive effects, I can definitely see vitamin B3 become a standard adjunctive treatment option for patients with glaucoma in the same way that AREDS2 vitamins are so often recommended to patients with macular degeneration. 
In terms of side effects, a review of high-dose nicotinamide found that the vitamin is generally well-tolerated. The most common reported side effects in about 1.6% of patients was heartburn, followed by flushing or dilation of skin blood vessels in 1.5% of patients, and nausea, also with a frequency of 1.5%. So, with all of this in mind, am I regularly recommending vitamin B3 to all of my glaucoma patients? Not quite yet. As a physician, my number one priority whenever I'm making any recommendation is safety. My second priority is safety, and my third priority is, well, safety. So I'm going to wait for the results from those large phase three randomized control trials to have a better idea of which glaucoma patients would benefit from the therapy and also to make sure that the long-term safety profile of vitamin B3 supplements is good. And remember that vitamin B3 supplementation does not replace the glaucoma treatment prescribed by your eye doctor. In the meantime, there are some ways to naturally increase your vitamin B3 intake, and that's through your diet. Some good whole food sources of vitamin B3 include fish, poultry, and nuts. Another natural way to help protect and boost our mitochondria is exercise. Research articles have shown that regular exercise helps to prevent the age-related decline in NAD plus in our skeletal muscles. There actually have not been any studies investigating whether aerobic exercise affects NAD plus levels specifically in our retinal ganglion cells, which are more relevant to glaucoma. But studies have suggested that aerobic exercise is associated with neuroprotection and slower progression of glaucoma. Generally, I recommend patients do 45 minutes of mild to moderate intensity aerobic exercise such as a brisk walk or an easy jog four times a week. Okay, I hope this review of vitamin B3 and glaucoma was helpful to you. In summary, the latest research shows that nicotinamide or vitamin B3 supplementation is a promising treatment method of neuroprotection for glaucoma and has been shown to improve visual function in short-term studies. But we're still waiting for those larger, long-term randomized trials, which are expected to be completed in the next few years, to get more definitive data. If you found the information in this video useful, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel for future updates. And if you live in the Los Angeles, Orange County, or Inland Empire area and want an eye exam or to get checked out for glaucoma, feel free to visit our website or give us a call to make an appointment today. I'm Dr. Michael Chuo with Puente Hills Eye Care. See you next time.